that at some point or other, there is going to be and going to have to be a collective system of organization which is going to somehow or other structure the economy in such a way that it deals with these crisis tendencies which are around right now. And I think that it's interesting that the crisis of 2007-2008 was focused on housing markets. The coming out of the crisis was largely due to the fact that China built like crazy fixed capital formation and consumption fund formation, particularly in housing, about 15% of uh, gross domestic product in China was uh, on housing alone. They, they, in other words, you got into the crisis because of, <laughs> of the housing problem. You got out of crisis by housing, by the housing problem. And now you've got the pandemic and we're coming out of the pandemic with guess what? Almost everywhere, housing prices are going through the roof. Everywhere there's a housing crisis and there's a housing crisis in the double sense that there's a vast amount of investment going into, into, in, into sort of housing, but there's a crisis of affordable housing. Now, go for it. So, so in other words, we're, we're, we're making an economy which is adequate for capital, which produces uh, urbanization and housing and all the rest of it as, as a tool for stabilizing the, 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 the global economy, rather than as a tool for satisfying the fact that there's a crisis of affordable housing wherever you go in the world. So these contradictions are not contradictions which we can easily uh, master and deal with uh, without massive organization and collaboration between different states. But we are actually seeing the, the play out of these on the ground right now. For example, if I said to you right now, there is a huge problem in the United States, uh, which is about the moratorium on evictions. Evictions from housing, that is, your large number of people are likely now to lose their housing in the next six months or a year because the courts have now said that the the, the moratorium on evictions is unconstitutional, and so we're going to see massive evictions. And, And that's going to create all this kind of stuff that around us, there's crazy building going on, and at the same time, no affordable housing, at the same time as you're evicting large segments of the population. It's quite possible. In the same way that seven or eight million households lost their, their housing wealth in 2007, 2008 in the United States, we would like to see yet another wave of that with another wave being set up by the fact that right now, this, we're seeing, if you like, these abstractions which I'm talking about, they're, they're, yes, they're abstract, but, but what we see is they touch ground. And they touch ground in very fearful ways. And right now, this whole kind of question of well, how, the lack of affordable housing, the moratorium, and the fact that many people are going to be evicted in the next six months, or, you know, and there's likely to be all kinds of social unrest attached to that. And, and so this is where the theory touches ground, touches it in a very, very, very visceral way. So here in New York City, we're likely to see all kinds of problems of this sort emerging. Uh, in the next six months. And, and, and yet it is the power of abstractions, which I'm talking about, which lies behind it. Therefore, understanding those abstractions says, well, until we, we're not, we, we can put band-aids over, over this whole kind of problem of housing, affordable housing right now, we can do some of that in the same way that band-aids were put on the sort of conditions in factory labor by the factory acts of Britain in the 19th century. We can put band-aids on it. But at some point or other, we have to address the way in which capital is functioning as a global system right now and the rules by which it is governing and it is the abstract rules of motion which, to which we are forced to adapt. And the only way that it can be dealt with is by complete agreement that this system is no longer functional in relationship to environmental questions, social provision, distribution of wealth, and, and the like. And those are the sorts of questions which need, need to be addressed. And it goes back again to that first level of abstraction. What's the relationship between what is happening to individuals now, to capital in particular places and particular times, and capital in general? And what's the relationship between them and how we should understand that and the levels of abstraction which are involved?